Thanks, Mark, for joining us today. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and your role at Currency Cloud? Hey, Beck. Nice to meet you. And my name is Mark Ledsham. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Currency Cloud. Um, and I've been with Currency Cloud now for just over a year. Uh, what is Currency Cloud's global expansion strategy? And uh, if there are any upcoming or existing plans for uh, uh, keeping the international momentum uh, going? Yeah. Um, Look, Currency Cloud has had a, a, you know, a very successful um, history, um, but we have predominantly been based within Europe and the UK. Um, we, are, have, we have customers around the world, um, but we have been much more focused recently on geographic expansion. Those expansion plans have included the US, Canada, um, and more recently, uh, Singapore and Australia. We're currently in the process of acquiring our Singapore license. But I think some really exciting news um, is that we've just received our Australian financial services license. And so that's really going to help us take those products down to the, to, to the Australian market. I actually think that's a, a really exciting time for the, for, the, for the fintechs and for the other businesses in Australia um, where the banking environment there, I think I'm sure you would have you would have heard there's been inquiries into um, the debanking that's been happening down there. So it's been hard for um, for for fintechs to to enable the products that they've been looking to enable, um, because it's been hard for them to get banking partners. And while we're not a bank ourselves, but we are able to to help them develop those international payment products. So we're super excited about being down in Australia as well. Currency Cloud attended Money 2020 Europe event in Amsterdam this year. Uh, what are key takeaways uh, from the event? Money 2020 was a was a was a great event this year um, in Europe. I think we have certainly missed it from our point of view, not having not having travel for the last couple of years with the pandemic. Um, so from from my perspective, I think the key takeout was being able to have that face to face interaction, both with customers and suppliers at the event. Um, and there was a, you know, there was a huge buzz for everyone to be to be back at a face-to-face -face event. Um, I think one of the key things um, we saw there is uh, there was a lot of businesses that were selling, um, um, you know, embedded. We're looking to acquire embedded capability, um, so we we were super excited to be there and be able to talk to some potential customers. What are the trends or predictions that you see in fintech and uh, open banking space? Um, the key things we see in, in, in financial services, as I said, is that move towards embedded um, capabilities. Um, you know, the, 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 the introduction of open banking um, has something that has enabled customers to take control of, uh, of their data uh, and choose where they want that data to be placed and choose where those services Want, they want those services to be placed. Um, and so what we're seeing there is with that, um, an easier capability to be able to verify customers um, by, by non-bank providers, um, and then also um, to then provide those embedded services to people. I think the interesting thing about international payments is um, that no one's sending money for no reason. You know, They're not sending money from one country to another and giving a little bit of it away along the way just for fun. Um, they're doing something that's quite emotive to them. Um, uh, and it's almost a, a secondary product to their primary need. So where we can take that pain point and that, um, that, that emotional stress that sometimes comes with sending an international payment and embed it within the product that is their primary need, you know, it just makes it that little bit easier and quicker for that customer as well. So for, my, for myself, that embedded piece and really... Um, and, and really that freedom of information and making it much easier for customers just to transact is what we're going to see moving forward. What is the latest news from Cl uh, Currency Cloud? We're, we're always busy and moving forward at, at Currency Cloud, so there's, there's always plenty to talk about. But I think the key things that we have at the moment, um, obviously we, we closed our, um, our transaction with Visa in the early part of the year in, or, or late uh, mid-December last year, sorry. Um, so we're really excited to be, be, be bringing the strength of the balance sheet of Visa that sits behind us to the innovation that we have at Currency Cloud. Um, coming more recent, 
Um, we've recently acquired our um, our Australian license, the AFSL license, enabling to access that re that that country. Um, and and we're we're deep into the process of our Singapore license, so expect to have that fairly soon as well. Um, and then we've we've recently just signed a really exciting customer down in Australia, backing up on that uh, on that acquisition of license. Um, a company called Banner, which is a, a super app down in Australia for financial services. Um, and we've, we're, we've, we're being able to um, embed our, our, our extremely competitive FX rates within their platform to help those customers um, get, um, get probably the, the best AUD USD rates um, in Australia for, for customers looking to do um, stock trading in the US. But also, we're starting to be embedded within their um, remittance businesses, remittance part of their app as well. So, um, yeah, it's great to be partnered with them, particularly such a, a progressive business down in Australia, and 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 really starting with an early win to prove our business model down there. Thank you, Marcus. Exciting news, and uh, it's a pleasure speaking with you. You too, Beck. Thank you very much.